uh, Tony Hayton, and I'm from Ottawa, Canada. What we're doing here in Charlotte today is uh, introducing uh, the Florida Highwaymen artists to the greater Charlotte uh, area, which this is a new place for the Highwaymen to travel. They uh, started out selling art uh, in and around their city of uh, town of, Saint, of Fort Pierce on the uh, Atlantic Ocean side of Florida. Back in 1954, now we've got uh, still six out of the 26 artists are still alive, thank God. And there's a gentleman, one of them, he's 91 now, and he goes to his studio every day and he still paints, which is pretty incredible. And in that gap of 1954 to 2023, which is almost 70 years now, they may have created as many as 250,000 paintings, which I'm not aware of any other group of artists that you could say have done that. They have been called the last great American art movement of the 20th century. And, and, you know, for whatever reason, and we could get into that, not enough people know about the Highwaymen and what they did and how they did it and when they did it. That started in 2000. I was on the internet because I was searching for some Florida art. I saw this painting on the screen that just kind of came right out at me. It was a, a beach and a palm tree and the surf was crashing and the birds were flying and it spoke to me and, it, and I said, that's what I'm looking for. And it said, Florida Highwaymen. And I kind of went, WTF is a Florida Highwayman. And I read and it said the Florida Highwaymen were 26 black artists that started painting in the 50s in, uh, in Fort Pierce in Florida. They kind of persevered through the social injustices of the time. Uh, they started off in a, in a Jim Crow era and then post uh, desegregation. They had to learn a way to sell their art because there were no galleries or museums for them. They also had to learn how to manufacture art where people like you and me could go out and afford it. They hit a magic spot, devised a way to paint fast. Uh, Alfred Hare, one of the, the leaders of the group, there's basically two or three essential core people in this story. One of them is Harold Newton, who uh, died in 94. He was a consummate artist a beautiful landscape artist. There was Alfred Hare. He was a driven man. He wanted to produce lots of art, sell that art, and he wanted to be a millionaire by the age of 30. We have Mary Ann Carroll, who uh, was a shining light, the, the only lady artist out of a group of 25 other men. And she was a strong lady. And then we have some other people, James Gibson, a friend of Alfred Hare. What we've done here in this exhibit, we've tried to show early art. Some of it is through the, through the decades and show how it's progressed and highlight the works of the early members of the group. So we're kind of lucky to have that here. One of the things that's kind of shocked me as a Canadian, I, I was inspired by the story of the highwaymen and, and what they did, and, and of course their art, which doesn't require interpretation. It's something that's e easily accessible. We don't have to look at it and go, what were they thinking when they did this, right? So uh, it was, that's one of the beauties of the art is that it shows a Florida that is almost a dreamlike setting not too many people or the signs of man are not prevalent. I say that this could be Florida of 10,000 years ago or Florida of today, but now people are saying is a legacy to a Florida of a different place in a different time, a Florida that 
doesn't really exist anymore. We call it a disappearing landscape where technology and the, the boom of, of cities and highways and condos and high ra- rises have, have changed what we see. So the highwaymen unknowingly uh, have created a kind of a historical perspective of a Florida that once was. The colors are vivid and they're, they're bold and they're vibrant. And you know, these artists were untrained, okay? There was two artists that ha- had some de- form of training. A lot of them uh, say that they, they like to draw them when they were younger. So we have Alfred Hare, uh, who was the gentleman that was motivated and cr- charismatic, and he drew members to join in and they, all these artists mentored each other, and they learned to draw by watching Harold Newton, who was a consummate artist. He who himself started out painting religious motifs on velvet, and he met a, uh, a gentleman in, in Fort Pierce who was one of Florida's, at that time, in the, in the uh, early 50s, was one of the consummate landscape artists in Florida, a white gentleman, but he suggested to Harold that he saw him as a talented guy. He said, why don't you try your hand Florida landscape? Harold was a quick study. The other artists aspired to Harold, and they, they worked trying to em- emulate him. Alfred, on the other hand, was saying, we got to paint faster. So he would set up maybe 10 boards, and they used a, a, a wall board product that was almost like a, a heavy, dense c- cardboard known as Upson board. Upson board was used for walls and ceilings and, and new construction, and it was sold in a 4 by 8 sheet. So the artists were able to cut that with a skill blade, turn a four by eight sheet into maybe, uh, they would get two two by four paintings, two two by three paintings, and two one by two. All of a sudden they've got six canvases. And then they, they used crown molding, door molding, window molding, casing as the frame because this was all part of the master plan, which was produce the art inexpensively, affordably. So Alfred and his buddies, uh, James Gibson, we have some of his works here, they would line up paintings on a fence or a tree or anything, and they go from painting to painting to painting, maybe doing the clouds or the, you know, the sunsets or the palms or the rivers. And what was happening in Florida at the time was it was, it was a boom state. Air conditioning was starting to become affordable and, and, wor- and it worked. There was super highways going into Florida. There was a space race going on where they were developing rockets. So people were swarming into Florida. It was becoming a tourist destination. All of a sudden there was all these new homes and uh, new businesses, motels, restaurants. All these empty walls in these new homes that were saying, we need a painting. <laughs> and, and the highwaymen were there, and they, they were able to produce paintings at 15 and 25 and 35 dollars, which, I mean, sounds inexpensive today. It was a bit expensive, right, for those people, but it was so compelling, and that you could buy a painting right from the guy that was painting it, and on top of that, we would have these uh, scenarios where they were producing so much art and trying to sell it as quickly as possible. They would stack it in the back of a car or the trunk. Often the painting was still wet. James Gibson said once that he painted 100 paintings in a day. In 1994, a gentleman by the name of Jim Fitch heard stories about black artists on the coast of Florida. Uh, and started to investigate them. At first, they kind of said, we don't want to see you. Uh, And then they gained trust with him. Eventually, 
he he wrote the early stories about the uh, the artists and then he gave them a name well in 1994 Harold Newton the kind of the first artist in the group had died that year Alfred Hare the other motivator of the group and the and the one that gathered all his friends and he he kind of single-handedly he developed a art industry in in Florida where you know some industry is we're building cars and other industries are we're building houses while well, Alfred Hare was was making paintings and a painting was considered undone unfinished until it was sold it's almost like a tragedy this is an american cultural story this is a history story this is a story of of people overcoming oppression a story of of innovation and, and creativity it's an american dream story to, to get back to your question what's why is it not into the institutional art circles it's getting there okay but it's shows like this that we need like the, the florida highwaymen to do an exhibit outside of florida this is new absolutely because these guys can be mentors for for all of us in a period of of distress and, and maybe hatred and they made something beautiful and and it, it had no barriers this art has no barriers and what they had did had no barriers that you know it, it said that they found a, w a way out of no way if they come here they're going to see some beautiful art for starters we've got 50 51 paintings original early paintings for the majority of the high women we've tried to put a historical uh, journey for the highwaymen. People are going to be immersed in the, in the color and the vibrance and, and the passion and, and the inspiration of the highwaymen. Amen. Tony Hayton from Ottawa, Canada. Please come and visit this great ex exhibit at 918.9 in uh, Charlotte.